And I'm going to talk to you about being a steward of his power and his glory. If you're a Lifestyle of Freedom student, level one or two, I want to see your hand. Can you raise your hand, level one or two? So the months over here, a lot of you and all over there. Okay. And over there. Okay. If you're, a, if you're a level two student and you're graduating today, let me see your hand. Wow. Okay. Uh, let me see your Okay. Okay. Come on. Let's give it up for all those graduating today. And uh, your next step is going to be Bible college. And so we can grow in the knowledge of God. One thing you have to learn about the Word of God and, 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 and education is the more you learn, the more um, the devil has a hard time taking advantage of you. The Bible says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. So the more you know, the more you can grow. The less you know, the less you grow. So it's very important that you further your biblical education and you learn more revelation because the more you know, the, the devil can't take advantage of you like he used to. His whole thing is to keep people ignorant of the Word of God. That's why in the Dark Ages, uh, what they did, the, the, the actual, I don't know why they did this, but the church was written in such an Aramaic language that the, the normal people didn't understand it. And because they didn't understand it, they were ignorant. And then the corruption entered the church, and the church actually was corrupted at that point. And they made people pay money to get to heaven. And God rebuked all that and blew all that up and exposed that through Martin Luther. And they put the, the Bible into the people's common language. And that, that's what, what real Christian education, really all education uh, really started from here. Uh, it was that the, the churches started opening up schools to teach the kids how to read the Bible. Because if you can know the Bible and you know the word of God, the devil is not, he won't be able to keep you poor. He won't be able to keep you sick. He won't be able to keep you defeated. Amen. Come on, clap like we're going to learn the word of God. We have to learn the word of God. People died. Awful deaths, so you can have your Bible, and I can have it in the language you understand it. And so don't just say, oh, it's my Bible. No, you, you love your Bible. You love Bible college. You love lifestyle. You love the Word of God. Love it. Love it. Amen? But I'm going to talk to you about being stewards of God's power and His glory. Point number one, what it means to be a good and faithful steward. And the word steward, I want to describe it to you. It means a household manager, a guardian. Um, it means you, he owns everything, I own nothing. And it's like somebody, say, uh, an, every, an apartment manager. I mean, no, the apartment manager doesn't own the apartment. But the apartment manager's responsibility is to make sure that that apartment's okay and that you pay your rent. Come on, somebody. <laughs> or they kick you out. <laughs> but how many know that's the job of a steward? You have to manage something. And so God says that I want you to be my steward. And hopefully by the first point we get through here, you understand probably one of the most heavy revelations you're ever going to, you'll ever know. So if you understand point number one, really that's going to revolutionize your entire life. And let's start with the first scripture, First Chronicles 29, 11. It says, yours, O Lord, say is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty for all that is in heaven and an earth is yours. So that says right there that you and I don't own anything. <laughs> and I'm going to let that sink in, you know, because I know the first time I heard that, I'm like, <gasps> what? <laughs> but I pay my mortgage. Come on. Okay, you're not going to be a happy crowd. All right, I get it. Tell your neighbor, God owns everything. And you own nothing. And the sooner you learn that, the less stressed out you'll be. <laughs> Seems kind of unfair. So like, well, Pastor, I, I saved money I, to get a down payment for my house. I got my credit good. I got a loan. I found the house. I bought the house. I paid... I'm paying my mortgage, my insurance, taxes on my house. That's my house, Pastor. Not really. God gave you that house. That's God's house. And one day you're going to die, and you can't take that house with you. I was gonna I was gonna keep going because this I know it's gonna get it gets tight. It's all good. 
I have a beautiful wife in the front row here, Elizabeth Lozano. She even has my last name, so it's like, she's mine. But the truth is, she's God's. And I'm a steward over her. I don't own her. She's God's. Let me come over here. All right, let me try another thing here. Jose Valle. So, Alicia, that's your husband, Jose, right? So, you say, that's my man. <laughs> On Instagram, she says, that's my man. <laughs> yes and no. He is your man, but he's God's man. And you, you, you're, you're to be a steward over him, but you don't own him. God owns him. <laughs> it's good, right, Carlos? Okay. Let's try this. Okay, I have, how many have kids? Some of you have five kids, you want to raise your hand. What's wrong with you? Come on, somebody. <laughs> How many got kids? Let me see your hand. You got kids? Okay. Those kids, are, th those are my kids. Yes and no. They are your kids, but God lent them to you. They're really God's kids. And you got to steward them. Manage them. Raise them right. Put them in Freedom Academy. Come on. How many have a business? Put your hand. Business owners. Yeah, a lot of you. A lot of you business owners. That's my business. Yes. And no. It's yours in a sense, but it's really God's business. And you're responsible to take care of it and be a steward over it. But in the end, that's God's business. Say, I'm not an owner. I'm a steward. This, this, this ministry has my name on it. Like, if we don't pay the payment, they're not going to come after you. They're coming after me. But I'm not stressed. I'm too blessed to be stressed. No, I say, this is God's building. This is God's bills. This is God's house. I'm just a steward. One day, Pastor Jay will go on to be with the Lord, and some other pastor will come and take this building. I, I can't take this church to heaven. <laughs> I know, it's a lot. I know, for a Sunday morning. Okay. But it's graduation, so we want to talk about it. Okay, let's go again. Some of you are already, I lost, I lost you like 20 minutes. Okay, now watch. Somebody turn that fan on over there. People need it. Okay. So, ready? Tell your neighbor, you have any money? Say, <laughs> say, give it to me. No, I'm just kidding. I just, all that, see how it gets tight? Money, huh? Uh, are you an owner or a steward over that money? You're a steward. That's why some of you have a hard time tithing because you still think you own it. That's a good point to clap and shout right there. I think that is a good point. Let's keep reading. Say, moreover, it is required. Say, it's a requirement in stewards that you be found what? Faithful. So what's the goal? To be a faithful guardian to be a faithful manager, to be a faithful steward of everything that God has trusted us with. John 3.30 says, this is the foundation of stewardship. You could write this down and say, he must increase but I must decrease. say it. Decrease. A lot of times we want to say he must decrease so I can increase. But how many know we must, we must, he must increase so we can decrease. Here's the interesting part. If he increases and we decrease, 
he actually gives us more increase. So the way up is down. The way we come up is actually to come down. I decrease, he increases, and if he increases, then he increases me. Because he could trust me with more. A lot of people will never have more because they're not faithful to be a steward over what they have. But if you're faithful in the little, God will give you more. Shout, I'm a steward. If you're unfaithful in our stewardship, here's a lesson. He said he called him and asked him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management because you cannot be a manager any longer. That's like somebody being an apartment manager and the owner says, here's my apartment. I need you to make sure it's clean. I make sure you call all of the workers to make sure the plumbing, the electrical, the drywall, the carpet, everything is functioning. I want to make sure you collect the rent. I want you to take care of my property. I'm not going to be there. I have 30 properties, and, and I need to be able to trust you that you're going to take care of my property. And the owner comes back, and the property's run down. It's all messed up. People are not paying. You're taking the money that was supposed to be for the, the mortgage of that apartment, and you're spending it on new, new lamps and furniture. you got a Lexus in the driveway. How many of that owner is not going to let you be a manager anymore? He's going to say, I'm taking this apartment from you, and I'm going to give it to another manager who's going to be faithful with it. And the, the Bible would say this way, you could understand it this way. It's like the owner comes and sees you and, as a manager and says, you're, you're a good manager. I have 30 properties. I'm going to give you another property, and I'm going to double your salary. And then all of a sudden, that owner comes back and looks at you doing good with two properties. He said, you know what? You're doing good with the two. You know what I'm going to do with you? I'm going to give you four properties. You know what? And then there's another guy over here that's messing up on the property. He said, you know what? Take it from that manager and give this one a fifth property. This one over here is not doing good. He has two. He's not doing good. Take both properties and give them eight properties. You know what? They're not doing good either. You know, take those four and give. Now, you can have 12 properties. Are you good with 12? Can you manage it? Okay, then let's give you 12 more. Can he, why don't you handle all my properties? I'll pay you 500000 a year. Come on, somebody. That's how. Somebody clap like we're going to be stewards. And that's where you treat it like it's your own. But in the back of your mind, you know all this is God's. My house, my life, my own body, everything belongs to God. That's why it says in Matthew 25, 23, at the end of the age, the Bible says that God will reply, well done. Say it with me, well done. Tell your neighbor, when you get to heaven, this is what you want to hear. Well done. Not half-baked. Not medium rare. Not you barely got by. Not you were a horrible steward. No, you want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. So when we get to heaven, we want God to say, well done. But what I've learned as I've walked with God over the years is that you don't have to wait to get to heaven for God to promote your life. God will begin to promote you and I as we're faithful in every season. And what happens is people don't want to be faithful with what they have as stewards, and then they want promotion anyway. So they kick, they connive, they bite, they overwork, they waste, they waste their lives, they overwork to be rich, they overwork for success, because it's not God's, it's theirs, and they try to do it without God, and that wears people out, that runs people down, and that kind of blessing is not from God. For the blessing of God makes a man successful, but there's no sorrow with it. You see, when you're faithful in the little and God promotes you, you don't have to kiss up to nobody. You don't have to connive. You don't have to cheat. You don't have to steal. You don't have to rob. You can do things right because when God raises you up, it's because you've been faithful. Shout faithful. All right, now let's move on. Say, I'm not an owner. I'm a steward. 
even though my name's on that mortgage, <laughs> I'm not an owner of it. God is. It takes a lot of pressure off your life. It's like a, man, that means you know in the back of your mind, if you do your part, how can God not do his part? If this house I own is not mine, but it's God's, then how can God never pay the, the mortgage if I do my part? That means God would be unfaithful. How many know God is not unfaithful? How many know God is faithful? God is reliable. God is dependable. God is trustworthy. Number two, steward well. Say steward well. The power of God and his vision. Psalm 62, 11 says, power, say power, belongs to you, God. Say power belongs to God. You see, God never gives a vision or an assignment without the power to back it up. And I'm going to say something here that's probably going to jar some of you that never heard it, but it's biblical nevertheless. Acts 10.38 says, you know about Jesus of Nazareth. Now, you notice it didn't say Jesus Christ. When the Bible says Jesus Christ, it's, it's referring to, you know, his divinity and also the anointing on him. When it says Jesus of Nazareth, it wants you to connect to his humanity. So you understand he was all God, but he's also all man. Now I'm going to make a statement. All the miracles he did, he didn't do it as God. He did it as a man anointed with the power of God. So he was a man anointed by the power of God. And that's how he healed the sick. That's how he casted out demons. That's how he cured the incurable. That's how he opened up the eyes of the blind. That's how he fed the 5,000. That's how he turned the water into wine. That's how he walked on water. He did it as the man anointed by God. Because if he did it because he was God, he could never ask you to cast the demon out. He could never ask you to lay hands on the sick. He could never ask you because if he did it as God, you're not God. But he did it as a man anointed by God. Now let's read. Say, now Jesus of Nazareth, God poured out on him the Holy Spirit and power. And he went everywhere doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil. For God was with him. And so we find that everywhere Jesus went, he delivered people and healed people because of the power of God that was upon his life. In Luke 4.18, it says the Spirit of God was on him and he was anointed to bring good news to the poor. He was sent with this power to bring forgiveness to the prisoners of sin. He restored with this power those that were blind. And he forgave those who had been shattered by sin. Another translation says he set the captives free. He healed the brokenhearted. And he delivered those that were oppressed. How did he do that? He did that with the power of God. How many are grateful for the power of God? Now I'm going to talk to the Lifestyle of Freedom students. How many are grateful for the power of God that has set you free? You see, you may not be where you want to be, but thank God that you're not what you used to be. And people want to know what has happened in your life. And you can say, the power of God has set me free. Somebody shout like you believe there's a power that can set you free. You see, God's vision is to let people go. And his power has set us free. 
in, but that's the blessing to have the power of God set you free. Because there's a lot of people here right now, maybe not a lot, but there's some people here, maybe watching online, maybe you're in the overflow. And you're in a condition right now that without the power of God, you'll remain like that. And you'll live the rest of your days suffering with that affliction. Whether that be an emotional, a physical, a mental bondage, or, or an addiction, you will not be able to get free without the power of God. Because there is a devil trying to hold you in bondage. But when the anointing power of God shows up, it can set the captive free. Shout power. Thirty years ago, I came to a church service, kind of like a an event, and I was a drug addict, but there was a reason I was a drug addict. It's because, you know, growing up, I had no dad. He left me when I was seven. And then my stepfather would abuse me every day. So I was, I was confused. I was broken. I was like Humpty Dumpty. Fell off the wall. And no one could put Humpty together. Well, Jason fell off the wall of life. And no one could put me together. So they just put me in prison. Because they couldn't help me. So they say, lock them away and make money off them. Come on, that's a bad system. And they should have locked me away. Hello? Oh, well, I'll keep preaching anyway. And they should have locked me away. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can I get a mic? Huh? Oh, my mom. Can you hear me out there, though? All right. So, and they should have locked me because I was crazy. I was insane in the membrane. Insane. And, uh, and I, I, I was helpless. So what I did is I turned to drugs because that was the only medication I could afford. And it started with weed, THC. And that's why a lot of people are on weed right now. Not that many people have glaucoma. Come on, somebody. Because when you're hurting and you're broken, you have to be medicated. So I started with weed and drinking. And then it escalated to a little bit of cocaine in the joint. And then just cocaine, and then I didn't like cocaine. I found something called methamphetamine and acid. So I went that route, and I wanted more, so I started making it. And I became a full-on drug addict, drug dealer, the whole nine yards. And if you looked at me, you said, that's a bad person. He's a drug addict. He's a failure. He's a... But the truth was, I was shattered, and nobody could help me. I was broken, and I couldn't get up. I was destroyed on the inside. But when I went to the house of God... There was a power. Come on, somebody. I said there was a power. And that power took that spirit of addiction and it took it out of me. I didn't want to get high anymore. That power went into my heart and began to put back together all the brokenness, all the shattered dreams and it allowed me to hope again. It allowed me to dream again. That power kept working, and it wasn't just to set me free, but God, come on, use that power to say, I got a plan for your life. I got a purpose for your life. How many thank God for the power of God? Clean me up. Set me free. I was happier than I'd ever been. Soberer than I'd ever been. Man, that power hit me so strong. You know, I ended up graduating high school because I got my education in prison. When I got out, I had enough credits. So basically, I, I had a GED from California State University. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I was 16 years, 17 years old getting out of jail. When everyone else was going off to, you know, the prom, I was getting out of jail. This is just my story. And I couldn't, I, I, when I was so messed up, I couldn't really read, I couldn't really write, I couldn't talk. But when the power of God hit me, it healed my brain. I went back to college, got an AA, got a BA, 
got a master's in psychology. Come on, stomach. Power. 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 Shout power. That power hit my life. I, it, 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 it turned me into a good man. I, I became a person that could hold down a job. Not just hold down a job, but I became an elite employee where people trusted me. It changed my life. It revolutionized my life. It made me faithful. It made me reliable. It made me dependable. How many know the power of God can set you free, deliver you, and bless you? Shout power. I'm not the same person I used to be at all. I mean, I may not be where I want to be, but my God, I, I was so radically changed. People, when the church first started, would come to the church. One couple came to shoot me. They thought I was still selling drugs from church because they couldn't believe that a Jason Lozano could be changed that much. But I want you to know that the power of God can heal anybody. Maybe you're a mother today and your kids are addicted and your family's broken. I got good news for you. Your children can be delivered by the power of God. Por de Dios. God power. all happy going back to school got money got a car I couldn't drive no car for some people that's a big deal but I had 18 suspended license in one year now they put you in prison for that back then they didn't I had like eight DUI they don't give nobody license I got my license back I got off probation come on somebody that's not a big deal for people, but for me, that was a big deal, Carlos. I started getting my life back. I started prospering. I started saving. I got a savings account. No one ever gave me no savings account. Got a savings account. Doing good in the hood. Then I heard a scripture from a pastor. He says, when the Holy Spirit spirit comes on you I said yeah you will be filled with power I said yeah and then he said it's not just for you though mijo it is for you but it's also for others and I want you to know lifestyle of freedom the power is for you and it's going to keep changing your life and it's going to keep lifting your life and it's going to keep empowering your life but it's not just for you because God is going to tap you on the shoulder and say, freedom you have received, now freedom you're going to have to give. You got to steward that power. You got to steward the dream of heaven. God never gives you power just to give you power. He gives you power to set the captive free. God power! Jesus said to the disciples, I need you to say it with me. Say, heal the sick. How I many you know there's a lot of sick people right now? I said, there's a lot of sick people. Oh, pastor, I don't believe that. Then you don't believe in Jesus. And you're not going to heaven. Because the only way to heaven is to believe in Jesus. And Jesus said, heal the sick. Oh, pastor, I can't. No, you can't. But the power in your life can heal the sick. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Cleanse the lepers. Those that are incurable, heal them. Then he took it to another level. This is Jesus now. Tell your neighbor, another level. Tell your neighbor, heal the sick. Cure the incurable. That's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Tell your neighbor, raise the dead.
they help us lord and say and tell your neighbor you got to cast out demons Somebody like, oh no, I've seen exorcist, I've seen conjuring, no way, pastor. Are you kidding me? You're talking about the power of Jehovah. You're talking about the power of the Almighty God. You're talking about the God that spoke for six days and created this earth. God's power. Oh. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, freedom you have received and freedom you need to give. Lifestyle of freedom, listen. We haven't charged you nothing. You paid for your book. All the teachers you've had, they not got, none of them got paid. The coaches you have, none of them got paid the buildings you used to learn in your classes you didn't pay for that you barely paid for your book we didn't charge you but we are going to ask you one thing the freedom that you got we're going to ask you to give it to somebody else Somebody ought to shout in here like I'm preaching. Come on, shout power! I was all blessed, feeling good. <laughs> Sing it. I was blessed. You don't know it, David. You act like you know it over there, boy. I was too blessed to be stressed. I'm happy. I'm feeling good. And then my pastor read this scripture, and I'm like, wait a minute. So this ain't just for me to get blessed. No, son. You're going to keep getting blessed. That's part of it. But God gave you power, and now you have to steward it. You have to protect it. You have to govern it. You have to manage it. And if you're faithful for, with the level of power he gives you, he'll give you a little bit more power. And if you're faithful with a little bit more, he'll give you a little bit more power. And if you're faithful with a little bit more power, he'll turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. Come on, somebody. How many want that power turned up in your life? I, I feel like praying in tongues right now. I said, how many want that power? That power turned up! Turned up. <laughs> I could have sat there and just been blessed got married my three kids had a good money, good income coming in a job or a business I would have been a businessman for sure and I would have been happy went to church paid my tithe everything's good but God tapped me on the shoulder and said remember the power is not for you and he tapped me on the shoulder he said mijo I said yes sir he said do you love me I said you know what I do he said then I need you to go to the city of Whittier <laughs> I said, Whittier, are you sure? He said, Whittier it is. I said, okay. And he says, I want you to go tell the Pharaoh in Whittier to let my people go. I, 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 I could have I said no, but I made up my mind a long time ago. I'm not an owner. I'm a steward. The power is not mine. My life is not mine. I belong to God. And if God says Whittier, then Whittier it is. Doubt like you're going to let God put greater power on you. Doubt power, power, wonder, working power. My God, I feel like a praise in the room. I'll give you five seconds. One, two, three. Give them praise. Power. Power. I'm going to ask everybody to stand on your feet got chains. He's a chain breaker. If you feel lost, thank God he's the way maker. If you need some freedom, 
he got freedom for you if you need a healing in your body there's power to cure disease if your mind is going all over the place there's deliverance for your oppression there's freedom for your mentality lift your hands all over the room let's worship for a moment He's away. You need freedom. If you need healing in your body and you're in the overflow, maybe you're in Asia, maybe you're in Australia, maybe you're in Africa, maybe you're in Singapore, right there in your living room, lift your hands to the God of heaven for that power and that virtue to and that anointing can deliver you, restore you, heal you. Lift your hands, lift your boca, la boca, lift it to God. Sing it, Aubrey. methamphetamine pipe and I'd break it and I'd say never again but the next day methamphetamine would call my name and I'd be back out because that had me like in chains but when the power of God struck my life it took that devil out of my life and said you ain't never going back in him again I don't know who's in bondage today and maybe you've never been in a church service like this but I'm telling you there's an anointing and a power to deliver you would you lift your hands to God close your eyes and say Jesus heal me Jesus deliver me Jesus rescue me Jesus save me that's it that's it. He's a prison That's it. Savior. That's it. He's a savior. Worship the Lord. If you have a family member or a loved one, go ahead and put your head on their shoulder. The power of God is moving. The power of God is moving. The power of God. The power of God. you to give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That ain't no praise. Hallelujah, they praise Connor McGregor better than that. They praise LeBron James better than that. They praise the Lakers better than that. We're talking about God. Now give God a shout of praise. I'm a Laker fan. I love the Lakers. I like, I love LeBron James and Anthony Davis. You may not like them. You're a Clipper fan. It's all good. You shout for whoever you like to shout. Last night I went for McGregor. I, I knew he was going to lose, but I wanted him to win. He lost so much. I thought, hey, it'd be a good, a good showmanship. When he went in the, the, the arena, 
20 some thousand fans just and you do that same thing in church oh what kind of church is this all these lies shouting don't be a hypocrite you i put you're the same one you'll drink like nine dos equis and you'll be ah and now you're in church talking about oh my god get it wait don't. somebody go ahead and just forget about that hypocrite spirit i said break that religious devil and do a praise in the room And I have to close. We need to steward the glory of God well. Never forget, no matter what God does in your life with His power, heals you, restores you, gives you a sound mind, breaks anxiety, worry, and fear off you, brings you into a place of peace you've never been, gives you dreams, gives you hopes, gives you a vision. God uses you with this power to help people. God prospers your finances and your business and your career. God heals you and cures your body no matter what his power does. Remember, no matter what it does in every area of your life, steward not just his power, not just his vision, but steward his glory. That's what gets me nervous about some of these athletes when everyone's praising and they sit there and take it I always say, man, you should get on your knees and thank God that you're an athlete. You should get on your knees and thank God He gave you that stage because when you, you, you can't take the glory, the glory belongs to God. God gave you a new house. Don't brag about it. Give God the glory. God prospers your business. Don't be arrogant. Give God the glory. God gives you a husband and a wife. Don't flutter around and be arrogant. Thank God and give Him glory. Everything, give God glory. Let not the wise man glory in his strength. Let not the wealthy glory in the riches. But let him that glory, glory in the Lord. Somebody give God the glory for what he's done, for what he's doing, and for what he's about to do. I feel a cataclysmic breakthrough about to hit this house and your house. Somebody shout like breakthroughs are coming. My God. Gideon was told by the Lord, hey Gideon, the people who are with you are too many for me to give you the victory. Lest Israel, my people, claim glory for itself against me, saying, my own hand has saved me. Never take the credit. I went back to college, I got my degree. Don't be arrogant about your education. I'm educated. Don't get arrogant. God gave you your brain. You could have been dead already. You could have had a heart attack already. Don't take credit for anything. Your marriage is good. Thank God for your marriage. Your children are doing good. Don't get arrogant. Thank God for your children. Your body's doing okay. Thank God that your body's okay. Everything that you have and everything that you own and everything you and I ever hope to be It's all because of God and Jesus climactic when he declared yours is the kingdom and yours is the power and yours is the glory Forever and ever and ever and ever we're gonna give God glory today We're gonna give God glory tomorrow and when we die and we leave this carcass of flesh and we have end up in the ethereal of heaven forever and ever and ever we'll be lifting up holy hands in the sanctuary of zion and we will be giving the king of glory the honor and the praise let's lift our hands to heaven and let's worship the living god somebody worship with me yes. Everybody, everywhere, lift up holy hands. Thank God that you're still alive. Some of you should 
could have died. You could have lost everything. But God spared you. Lift your hand, Kurt. COVID can encourage you you lost their body but you never lost them because he has them because they've always belonged to him I said they've always belonged to him and Ma we're going to get to the other side of glory and Jesus is going to be waiting for us on that other side my grandma's going to be there your mother's going to be there your father's going to be there my grandpa's going to be there your loved one's going to be there and you know what we're going to do forever and ever and ever and ever we're going to stay worthy of it all worthy of it all worthy 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 come on let's worship Thanks for watching Freedom. Be sure to check us out on all social media platforms and subscribe to us on YouTube. We hope you enjoyed today's video. We'll see you soon.